Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Oh God, I'm releasing this Friday. Okay. Hello everyone, happy Friday, and welcome to Wabbit Woof You with me, Gilda Wabbit. We are back for another episode of Drag Race after our dear New York sister, Monet Exchange has left us. The queens walk into the workroom saying, long live the sponge, and I have to agree. I wish Monet were still here, but Cameron gave a fierce lip sync, and so she's here to wipe down the mirror. Except Cameron is really upset about this and literally says, I would rather have been Monet than have to wipe off this mirror. Cameron, girl, you are here to play the game. What are you saying? If that's gonna be your attitude, that you would rather be home than have sent a girl home, go, leave. Like, believe in yourself. You're an exceptional drag queen. Jesus, I ain't got the budget or the clothes that you do and every day I wake up and I go, you were gonna put on a good show tonight. Anyway, I'm stressed about Cameron's emotions and I just went on a three minute diatribe about it. So let's move on to the rest of the show. We have a mini challenge called resting brunch face in which the girls have to put pancakes into drag for the first time. Two things to note with this mini challenge. One, Ms. Cracker makes a bachelorette, which I think is really interesting because Cracker has upset me before for writing a long article for Slate about how straight women, particularly bachelorettes, shouldn't be in queer spaces, which to me just came off as misogynistic. So I found it interesting that she referenced that on today's episode. Also, Asia O'Hara wins the mini challenge because hers is literally the only funny pancake. Her pancake was lit. Cheyenne Jackson enters the workroom in a totally inconsequential walk-on role to announce that the main challenge is an evil twin runway in which one outfit will be the good twin, the confident, beautiful, self-loving you, and the other outfit will be your inner saboteur, or as Miss Cameron Michaels likes to call it, her saboteur. Saboteur, darling. Now I'm excited for this challenge because I love a good design challenge and I know my girls Aquaria and Miss Cracker are gonna kill it. Honestly, honestly, I'm so excited because like literally the three girls that I'm rooting for the most right now are Cracker, Cameron, and Aquaria and I'm like, they got this in the bag. This is gonna be a good challenge, y'all. Also, we have a moment with Rude Paul, which I get is sort of clever way of talking about this challenge, but I thought the green screen work and the acting of the curls in reaction to the green screen work was not very good. And let me tell you, that is literally the next 45 minutes of the episode. I felt like I was in the twilight zone watching this episode because it didn't fit the tone of the rest of the Drag Race episodes that I've watched. And it was like, they were just like a new filmmaker discovering the magic of green screen and split screens and like showing it off. Was this RuPaul's idea? Was this RuPaul's idea? It was weird. It was really weird. I did not like it. I wish it had just been like a straight show. Like the Rude Paul bit was like the only thing that was like that. But we have a whole show of it. Luckily for you all, tonight's episode is entirely made of the Wabbit one down of the one way. I've got my notes right here, let's dive right in. Number one, I wrote, Cameron looks amazing. Sickening, exceptional. Amazing. Eureka O'Hara, the good twin look, the boot. It was bad, bad. Literally, I know so many drag queens in New York City who have the same fucking outfit but do it better. All of Stephanie's child has that outfit and look far better than Eureka O'Hara. Cracker, she looks great. Brilliant, beautiful, super cool. It was fierce. It was lit, girl. Aquaria comes out. And of course, she, <sighs> I just don't have words, clearly, for how exceptional Aquaria is as a drag queen. And I'm 
living for everything she's doing on this show. And tonight was no exception. It was, it was brilliant. <sighs> Friends, I apologize for my ignorance, but I really don't understand Asia O'Hara's design aesthetic. The good twin runway, I thought was bad. The shapes, the colors. I will say I really liked her evil twin runway. I thought that was really cool. Maybe I don't like Asia O'Hara in hair. I'm gonna ruminate on that. Get it? Ruminate? Now, we get to the judging and it becomes clear to me very quickly that this isn't a runway challenge. It's a character writing challenge. Because Asia and Eureka were not good on the runway tonight to me, but they are heaped praises upon them. And Cameron and Cracker looked amazing and they are criticized for their performances. So, two of my favorites of the evening, Cameron and Miss Cracker are in the bottom. Luckily, another one of my favorites, Aquaria wins. Now wait, wait a second. If this is not a runway challenge, if this is a character and acting challenge, why does Aquarius runways give her such a huge score when Cameron and Cracker don't get any help from looking amazing on the runway? Huh? This is some selective ass judging right here. And let me tell you all, I just think that, uh, the judges don't get Cameron and Miss Cracker and they're ready for them to go. And that pisses me off because I want to see the top three of my dreams, Miss Cracker, Cameron, and Aquaria. And it won't happen now because we're not getting a second double Shantae. So we get to the lip sync and y'all, Cameron came out the gate like galloping, ready to win. She's so entertaining. And I thought for, I thought Miss Cracker started off kind of weak, but she started to pick up steam, especially when she was like, given the, given the business to Cameron, you know, like referencing her when the song was like nasty. Uh, so I really enjoyed watching this, but as much as I hate to say it, Cameron really killed it. And the judges agreed. So Miss Cracker went home. We're gonna get through this queer dose, I promise. Anyway, kids, my name's Gilda Wabbit, and this has been Wabbit Review. We're here every Friday whenever I decide to release the video. If you like uh, me, you can follow me here on YouTube. Please subscribe, that helps out a lot. Also leave some comments below if you have any questions. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Venmo at Gilda Wabbit, G-I-L-D-A-W-A-B-B-I-T, or you can find me at gildawabbit.com. I'll see you next week, bye!